The following program is suitable for family viewing. Well, non-family members can join in too. wonderful people and welcome to another fantastic episode of Taste Buds. My name is Chef Renny Chooks and I'm excited to be bringing you this episode today. Today we have a very interesting and ingenious dish from Nigeria for you today. We will talk about the ingredients when we get back. For the ingredients for the very wonderful dish that we have to make today, which is, wait for it, moi moi and ogi bean cake or bean pudding, however you want to say it in Nigeria. We have beans, almighty beans, brown beans precisely, and then you have to wash them and take off the brown skin until they're exactly like this. Okay, we have peppers, we have the big peppers which we call tatashe, and the um, habanero peppers, the scotch bonnet, which we call rodo as well. And then we have onions, and then we have salt, and then we have seasoning cubes as well. Now to the fillings. You can use any kind of fillings that you want for your moi moi. So we have corned beef, we have shredded chicken, we have shredded fish, I'm using Titus, we have the eggs, and we have oil. And then for the pap, it's really simple, ogi or pap, because pap also means something else in South Africa. So I'm just going to say ogi, you know, because that's what we also know it as here. Or akamu, I think. Yes. So we have the powdered one. We have the milk. And then we have sugar. We have foil. And we have the leaves. Because these are the things that we're going to use to wrap the pudding. And of course, we have water. So... Let's get to cooking. All right. So first thing we have to do is blend the beans. And in blending the beans, you blend it with a little bit of the pepper as well so that it adds some color and also some spice. How much scotch bonnet or atarodo you put in there is dependent on how spicy you want your moi moi to be. Like you already know, I like spicy food, so I'm going to put in quite a bit of the habanero pepper or scotch bonnet in there. I'm going to cut the onions as well into little bits and put in there so it blends faster and easier. I'm going to cut them into little bits. Um, and you have to be careful how much of the quantity of beans you put in there because with the blender, um, the blades might not be strong enough to, you know, carry your beans. So little portions at a time. Put the habanero pepper in there. Put one more, two more. There you go, voila. And there it is, we're ready to blend. So now that we have our beans and pepper and onions well blended, we'll just turn them in here for easy mixing. You should have a very nice butter, as the case may be. It should be nice and smooth. If you can go a little bit longer, that will be fine as well. It's better if you use a wooden spoon when you're blending together your ingredients. So the first thing I want to do is put in a little bit of oil. 
about two, three tablespoons of oil. I'm gonna stir that together. And then I'm going to put in the seasoned cubes. One and a half of that. I'm going to put in one egg and I'm going to mix it together. This helps bind the butter. Okay. Now I'm just going to mix, mix it all together. Now, like I said to you earlier, I have about three fillings here or four fillings that I'm going to put in the moi moi. If you're using a number of fillings, then you have to put your fillings after you fold them in the um, foil or in the leaf. But if you're having just one filling, then you can put it in at this point. So you can put in your corned beef or your chicken or whatever filling it is you're using at this point, okay? But because I'm not doing that, I'm going to wait for a little bit. Okay, that's well blended. A little bit of salt, just for taste. It's well stirred. And then that goes in the pot. Okay. So we want to get, no, we don't put this on yet. We just open it. And now to the tricky part. I'm sure a lot of you who don't know how this turns out, you're wondering, oh, what is going to happen? How is she going to wrap this in this? How is this going to hold? How does this happen? It's very easy. And for me, this is something that's very, very nostalgic. This is something that's very, very close to my heart. Moi Moi was one of the first things that I learned to cook. Um, my grandma used to make Moi Moi every Saturday um, with Pap and, um, for breakfast and my mom and I will be in the kitchen with her and we'll have like a little assembly line. I was the little one so I got to wash the leaves and arrange them neatly and pass them to my mom. My mom folded them and then she passed them to my grandma. My grandma then filled it with the butter and arranged them in the pot. It was really really nice. God bless my grandma so she's late now but that stayed with me okay. So I'm going to just teach you that now. So we take the leaves making sure that the shiny part is outside and then the dull part is inside. And then we fold one end of it like that. And then the other end comes over it like that. And it rolls like a cone. What you're trying to achieve is like a cone, okay? And if you look on the inside, it's not overlapping. It's full, it's space. It's enough space for the filling to go in. If you put anything in at this point, it will drip out. So you have to make sure that there's no drips. There you go. That is the secret to your money. Mind. You have to hear that snap where the stem breaks in and allows for you to have a close edge for your butter to go in. Okay. So at this point, you put in your butter, little spoonfuls at a time. And then let's start with the fish. A little bit of your filling in there. Some people would do this and then they will put another layer of butter in there so the filling is hidden in the middle. Some people put it at the top. Whatever your preference is, is fine. Okay? So at this point, you take your moi moi leaves and just sort of pinch, fold over. You fold it together and you fold over again. And there you have it. A nice parcel of moi moi butter. There you go. Now let's try it with the foil. For those of you who do not have access to moi moi leaves, you can use your foil paper. Foil can be gotten anywhere in the world. Any supermarket, any convenience store will have foil paper. It's very simple, very easy. You want to make a parcel out of this as well. So you fold it, again, going with the shiny um, part outside and the dull part in the middle. Fold it in, just like so. I'm gonna make some space here. And then, you 
fold this part in like that. You fold this top part in like that as well. Just like you're making little squares. You fold it in again so that it's double protected. And then you fold this side in again. And there you have like a small sachet that you can put your butter into. See that? And it won't leak out because you've protected it by folding it twice. So in goes your batter. There you go. We'll do the chicken now. And you're filling in there. And then to close it is very, very easy. All you have to do is just fold the edge one time. And then another time, and voila, you have your moi moi parcel. So there's no excuse for you not to eat well made moi moi at this point. Let's make the rest of it. So we have all the batter wrapped up in the moi moi leaves and the foil. And now we're going to put a little bit of water because what moi moi tries on is the steam. That's what actually cooks the moi moi. It's not the, the fire. It's not something that gets direct contact with fire. So it's the steam from the water that cooks the moi moi. So we just put a little bit of water, being very careful not to drown the butter and we'll cover it. Get that going. We'll go on a quick break. When we get back, we will make the ogi. Very creamy, very nice, very thick. Just the Nigerian way. All right, now we're going to prepare the ogi or akamu. Very, very nice. So we have the powdered one here. You can also get it wet um, and, and like, um, like, I don't know how to explain it, like a cake, sort of. You get it wet um, and that's another option. And there are two ways you can make this as well. You can either make it on the stove, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have water going on here. Um, just have some water going on. So, or you can also, first of all, whichever way you want to go about it, you have to first of all make a paste, okay? So I'm going to put some of the powdered be here and then we're going to put some water and we're going to make that paste stir it all together this way you avoid lumps the worst thing you can ever do is try to make ogia make cocoa instead that is another variation of ogi it's called cocoa and for the life of me I cannot so yes, to have nice, creamy, smooth ogi, you have to make sure there are no lumps in. So, nice and smooth, just like that. There you go. So we're going to wait for the water to boil. Once the water gets to boiling point, then we pour in the paste, and then it begins to thicken up nicely, and there you have it. The other option is when the water is boiled, you take it from here and pour in the bowl. That's how some people like to do it. But I've tried that a couple of times and it always failed. <laughs> like I came up with like really, really watery pop. So instead of doing that, I prefer the foolproof way of doing it on the stove. Our moi moi is boiling away and the smell from here, oh my God, it's really, really heavy. Like I can't wait to dig into my moi moi and my pop. <laughs> So now our water is boiling. Now what I like to do is take a little bit of the water out of there, the hot water. So just in case it is too thick, I can thin it out. And the, if I use water straight from the tap, it might, it might um, change the temperature um, and drop the consistency. So I want to use the exact same temperature of water. At this point, you can't leave this on fire and go do something else. You have to stay with it have to stay with it and stir it because it's going to cook up really really fast you can see it's beginning to thicken on the sides it's beginning to thicken on the 
appetite. If possible, go on very, very low heat for this one. Maybe not so low, but medium heat so that it doesn't um, stick into the point of lumps. So you can see it begin to thicken. There you go. Ah, look at it beginning to thicken up. And it's looking really nice and creamy. I might have to thin it out with some water because it's beginning to look <laughs> maybe a bit too thick. So I thin it out with some water and then stir so you incorporate everything and then we'll go on a quick break and then when we get back we'll plate up taste the food and of course I'll give you the tips for the day <laughs> we are ready to eat yes so we'll start with the pap just gonna take a nice scoop spoon we're going to just take nice scoops of it. See how thick and rich and creamy it looks. Yum, yum, yum. I'm telling you, my grandma will be so proud of me right now. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, so that's right there. We're going to take, whew, to get my tongs for this one. It is really hot. Don't try that at home. So, I'll grab a plate. We'll take one of the leaf ones there and we'll just ooh, look at how smoky hot that one is oh yes oh yes oh. do you see how beautiful that is the egg is right under and the yolk mm. voila voila We'll try one of the foil ones too. Go. And of course, at this point, there's no need to be extra, extra careful. You can open it however you want. Well, this was entirely my bad. To avoid sticky moi moi to your foil, you should oil your foil a little bit. A little bit of oil on your foil and you won't have sticky moi moi. Okay. Now I'll just do the needful with my pack. A little bit of sugar. I'll stir it up. I have a sweet tooth. I apologize. You don't have to use that much sugar if you're doing it but I have a sweet tooth, so I like it really nice. I like to feel like I'm taking hot ice cream. There's anything like that. <laughs> okay, so that's all nicely done. And then we hit it with the nice evaporated milk. Oh, cover it all up, yum, yum, yum. Heaven in a plate. Grab my fork and a taste of the moi moi. Try the part with the egg. This is good. It is good. Grandma, I did good on that one. Let's try the pap. No doubt it will taste nice. Amazing, amazing. This is great breakfast. Breakfast for the champions. <laughs> All right, let's get to the tip for today. Egg freshness test. Now, if you want to try to check if your egg is fresh or not when you get it from the grocery store, fill a bowl with cold water and place your eggs in the bowl. If they sink to the bottom, and lay flat on their side, they're very fresh. If they're a few weeks old, but still good to eat, they'll stand on one end at the bottom of the bowl. Now, if they float to the surface, they're no longer fresh enough to 
eat. So please do not eat them. Make sure you do this test, especially when you get um, eggs from anywhere that you're not really, really sure of. Thank you very much for allowing me to bring you this fantastic episode of Taste Buds. If you want to get in touch with us through our social media platforms, we have it scrolling up on the screen. And if you want to try this and um, show us your tries, send it to us on those platforms as well. If you have any questions or suggestions, hashtag Ask Chef Renee, and we will answer you right back. Well, thank you for letting me bring you this wonderful episode of Taste Buds. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with us or show us um, your price of this, our dishes or any other dish, just go on our social media platforms. We have a scrolling on the screen right now. And if you want to ask Chef Rene a question, hashtag Ask Chef Rene on our social media platforms. Thank you for watching the episode. And until we come your way again with another fantastic episode, this is Chef Rene saying cook with love, love one another. Goodbye. <laughs>